everybody and welcome to another edition of the Big Joel Show. I'm excited to have Mina Evans Alston, just clarified that, make sure that was perfect, here. Mina works with Lockheed Martin, which I'm sure most of you all know, and I'll tell you the story how I met Mina in a couple of minutes. Mina's title is Corporate Senior Manager for Leadership and Professional Development, which is a large title, and she's got a lot of cool things going on. Mina and I met each other. I don't even COVID screwed everything up. Is it ten years ago? Got to be ten years ago, right? At least probably. Um, and the program. What is the program? Oh, I always get it wrong. Though. It's OLDP. OLDP. Lockheed Martin has this really cool program. I'm going to let Mina explain it because we're going to talk about leadership today and young people and being successful and all things uh, that Mina does and deals with every day. Um, and when it's a really cool program for young Lockheed employees. They have to apply to get into it, right? They and do. it's a, is it, is it, is it three years? Is it? It is a three year program. And it's six months, six months, six Nope. Months. One year rotation. Okay. So one year rotation. So you're in three different places mm -hmm. and then you graduate yes. as a leader within yeah. Lockheed Martin. Potentially. Potentially as a leader. And uh, Mina hired me for some reason, I don't know why, to come in and, and talk about uh, my book, a little book on Big Ego. Uh, and I don't know whether I was on the first day or the last day, the first time we did it. Mm -hmm. But um, it was great. And I really had an awesome time. I always enjoy especially taking Q&A. And the smarter the audience for me, the better, because the questions are always incredible. So Mina and I met each other. We've known each other a long time. And we talk a lot and we're always talking about leadership and like uh, Mina says, she's talking about egos and all sorts of things. And so I thought it would be awesome for everyone, for my audience, to have someone like you who's an awesome person um, and, and let them hear some pearls of your wisdom. Um, you know, my audience is varied. Uh, a lot of people that sell anything, mm -hmm. lots of leadership stuff. And, you know, we were just talking earlier even about, about young people. Tell me... What do you what do you see in this market right now? You you're getting them young, you're getting them old. You have everyone. Where 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 do you see people being very successful, and where do you see people having challenges? All right. So first, thank you for having me. Absolutely. I guess when we talk about where we see success, right? So in a company like like here, we have early career professionals, and then we have our experienced professionals who've had 20, 30 plus years, and we have what's in between. So really the things that I'm noticing in our workforce today is the need for work-life balance. My generation, you worked hard, 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 hard if you wanted to get to the senior level of any organization. The current workforce needs to have a little bit more balance. They want it, but they don't want it the same way with that same push. <laughs> the very nice, very nice way to put it, by the way, but keep going. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. Of, you know, that seven day, you know, 60 hour week, you know, they are not interested in that. They have big lives that they're more interested in. And the other thing that I've noticed is they will quit a job. As far as being loyal to a brand, loyal to a company, loyal in that way, no. The loyalty really is to more so of what their self-desires are now. And so with the moving out of no pensions anymore, all of those things that financially That would help keep people, someone there. Yeah. That would keep people there are no longer there. So you can move your 401k anywhere you want to go. And so financially... It's not. Um, but the things that I do see where people are being extremely successful are those who just want to learn, who just want to get in there into the industry and learn all that they can, bring their knowledge and just contribute. Those people tend to just move. You just see them start to flourish. The ones who just want to absorb it all. We do see the ones who are very bright and intelligent, who come with a more telassertive where they're more so of what can I put in there and what is my opinion about it versus what can I learn to become subject matter experts. So those who really come to grab everything they can are extremely successful. So this, this, is, a, this is a great message for everyone watching mm -hmm. this. Like this is a cross the board great message for all young people entering mm -hmm. the workforce. And even if you've been around for a little bit, yeah. it's very interesting. So 
when somebody wants to learn mm -hmm. at that level, it, you can overcome some of the other work, work, work stuff, can't you? Oh, absolutely. Immediately, you're not you're not being judgy mm -hmm. as people um, of you and I's stature. By the way, we're both 32, so y'all can leave that exactly. there. Exactly. Uh, of our stature, we would we could judge very quickly. Mm -hmm. Work ethic judge. Yes. You know, some, where are you at 3 o'clock? Where are you in the gym? What do you mean you're in the gym? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you answer your email or whatever? We right. can be very judgy very quick. So overcoming some of the lifestyle choices of a, the younger generation, overcoming it with you is the, a thirst for knowledge, a learn, 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 is almost, I don't want to call it a pass, but... Is it pretty close to a pass? It is. That growth mindset will get you a pass every time. You create space for people who want to really learn and have that growth mindset. So if you do want to go to the gym at 3 o'clock, but you know at 4 you got to come back because we got some stuff we need to finish up, it's really trying to also create space for how they move about the world now because we have to and it's important. But at the same time, you've got to want to learn growth mindset, get in there and just learn, 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 learn. Because if they're not, I mean, how will you ever know? <laughs> how will you ever know? Yeah, it's it is it is it's amazing um, generationally. And I always feel like when I'm talking about this, I feel like it's my dad saying I walked five miles in the snow and <laughs> bare feet to get to school. And well, I walked you know, a whole yeah, mile to school. Yeah, I, I always feel like you know, oh, I must not know what I'm talking <laughs> about, but. I kind of feel like I do. You know, we were talking before, and one of the biggest things I see with young people today mm -hmm. is I see experienced senior managers, experienced people, people attempting to really speak the language mm -hmm. of younger people coming in. But what I don't see a ton of is those people really attempting, it's a little bit what you're talking about right now, to speak my language, right. meaning to, to understand um, me a little more and you know for now okay i might still be the boss mm -hmm. so or, or whatever you want to call it the manager the mm -hmm. leader whatever it is and so if you come in and you don't even try mm -hmm. to speak my language it doesn't matter how smart you are all right it, it doesn't matter how your your resume it, it doesn't really matter because it's never going to work right right and 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 it kind of you know it, it it comes along with you know that that you call it a thirst for knowledge which is a great i mean it's really an incredible message i don't know if people really go in if that's their first thought. Mm -hmm. I, th I think their first thought, especially if they've come out of a four-year college, um, you know, maybe they have a master's, I don't know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a more an elite thought of, okay, I'm gonna come in here and change the world. I'm gonna bring my stuff because I know what I'm doing mm -hmm. and I'm gonna really make an impact, which by the way is good, mm -hmm. but they miss part one. And I feel like all of that gets shaded personality shaded. I mean, we could start getting to every chapter of my book here in a second, but it gets shaded because you miss it. You miss how awesome yeah. they are because you're sitting there going, oh man, I need to smack that guy. Uh -huh. Right? Mm -hmm. is, that a, is that a safe? And that's a safe assessment, but because I have the leadership development focused on operations, I am what you would call their auntie at work. So what that means is I'm your truth teller. Right. So when I see the behavior, I'm going to call the behavior. How is this helping you get to where you want to go? So let me tell you what I see. Is that what you wanted us to see? Is that what you wanted me to see? Because if it is not, this is what we do see. And let me talk to you about how it is a derailer for you professionally. And people have to be willing to have these very transparent, open discussions and feedback sessions with young people. It's nothing I hate worse than leadership or someone else is talking about someone's lack of, you know, uh, professionalism or their uh, professional presence or whatever the thing is that they have and not tell the person because they cannot fix it unless they are aware that this is how I'm showing up, right? It's like they're hiding it from the person. Yeah. <laughs> and creating a career stop for them because that will follow them. This person doesn't listen. They don't follow through. They cannot engage at all levels of the organization, dot, 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 whatever it may be. And um, don't build relationships, you know, because the relationships, if I teach them anything is the relationships and the networking is key. All of them come in technically astute. We all know people tend not to lose their jobs because they lack technical astuteness. They lose their job because they lack EQ. By the way, everyone, this is when you pause and you listen to that again. <laughs> you don't need to say it again, but that was massive message what you said, meaning, meaning why people lose their jobs. Sorry to 
disrupt your flow, but keep going because it's that was okay. awesome. Yeah. Because it is the reason why you might not get a great opportunity on a great project. Other things because you can't lead others because that EQ is far more important than your technical. So my father was an educator and he always believed if it could be taught, it can be learned no matter what it is. No matter what your level of, listen, I was the worst math student, whatever, ever. But he always believed if it could be taught, it could be learned. It is just a process of how we're going to get you to learn. So just people understanding that the relationships matter. So the relationship matters that they're at a different season in their professional life than we might be, right? But it's also teaching people to respect those who came before you <laughs> because it's knowledge in there. And if you feel like you don't know, that's where you're going to mess up every time. So when you're interviewing, I, I know my audience mm -hmm. will will really like this because I do a lot of interviewing for my mm -hmm. clients where they're adding people to their teams. And mm -hmm. it used to be, I would talk to 10 people and we would have a couple of good candidates. And now literally I feel like I could talk to a hundred people yep. and it's not that they're technically, it's what you said. It's not that they're not mm -hmm. technically astute. It's, they're not emotionally equipped. They're not mm -hmm. they're I'm looking at them and I'm going, mm, this, you're never going to, or you're going to be gone in two months. Either mm -hmm. we're going to, either we're going to have to ask you to leave or you're going to leave. I right. can just tell you're not willing to invest, you know, the time into, you know, you, you, you said it very quickly. People will rewind and watch this again when you're talking about the relationship mm -hmm. piece, you know, smart, I, I, the, the title to my second book is The Smarter You Are, The Harder You Fall. Because people don't, you know, they, they come in and they're like, hey, man, I, got, I graduated with a 4.5. I, right. I was number one in my chemical engineering class, wherever it was. I was number one in the whole school. I'm the valedictorian, mm -hmm. which means, therefore, I am now number one in this, you know, in the Bethesda office of Lockheed Martin or whatever, right? I'm now number one. That could not be further from the truth. I don't care how smart you are. It, does, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing that I always say is, it doesn't matter if you're right, if the other person isn't ready to be wrong. Mm -hmm. You can be right all day long. You could be the rightest person around. Mm -hmm. But if the person you're talking to isn't ready to be wrong, then you're never right. I know that sounded like mumbo jumbo, but it's right on. <laughs> and I find that these young, smart people, which is the next generation, these are the people that are, that are voting, these are the people that are taking over for us, mm -hmm. um, have challenges with that. I think a lot of it is social media based. I think they're texting instead of calling. You know, I think there's a lot going on, but it's fairly scary to me um, that it's hard to find. It's not hard to find smart people. It's not hard to find um, people that can do the job, mm -hmm. but it's hard to find the people that like I want doing the job. Right. You know what I mean? That I know are going to fit in. That not everyone's going to go, Mena, who hired this person? Mm -hmm. You know, within two weeks. Because their resume is gleaming, right? Mm -hmm. The most beautiful resume ever and came in like you dropped a boulder in the middle of the pond, right? And now everybody's soaking wet mm -hmm. and they're upset about it. Tell me what, give me your top, like, I know you're having these conversations all the time because you and I have talked about it before. Right. What are your top two, three subject matters when, when, Work auntie has to get involved. Is it, is it, you know, what are the things it's almost always about? I, I think people would love to hear that. Meaning when you have to coach someone up, mm -hmm. counsel someone, when it gets to your desk mm -hmm. and they need a conversation, right. share some of that. What, what, what's it usually about? Where does it start? It starts with entitlement. Okay. Okay. So. Not um, shocking. Yeah. So I'm not just going to say that it is just our young, early career professionals that have it. You'll see it along the way if that's your mindset. But the biggest thing with them is the entitlement, right? The idea, because we have given them everything. And the idea that you've never been told no to me is shocking. The first time I tell them no, I mean, it's like I've blown up the world. <laughs> and I'm like, you yeah. will survive. Right. You, It's not final or fatal. You will get over it. But that's the biggest idea of entitlement to I don't want to do this. I don't feel I should have to do this. Listen, this is a business arrangement. We pay you. You work, <laughs> right? We're together. We're a couple. This is yeah. how we're going to do this. But having that understanding, but also making sure that we see them. So usually it's that. Usually it is um, a, a bit of laziness, and I hate to say that word that way, but so I'll say it differently, a lack of motivation. 
much more politically correct way to put it. Yes. yes. Yeah. The, the politically correct way of is the lack of motivation to move themselves along and the idea of having big dreams with no work. Right? Which is ties right back into entitlement. entitlement. Those two are definitely yep. in a vicious so circle. If you look at entitlement and you break it all down, it is what is the biggest thing that is going to ruin it every time. Right? Because the conversations that tend to go on that are derailing them tend to come around entitlement. Right? They don't feel like they should have to do things. They don't feel like they should have to have certain conversations. They don't have to work certain hours. It has to be on what they want it to be. And the other thing is that we put our program participants in some really tough and difficult situations. On purpose. On right? purpose. Yep. Because if we're going to accelerate you, you've got to be ready. And one of those is floor supervisors, um, where they are supervising our manufacturing environment. And some of them have people who are their parents' age, their grandparents' age. Who could be making a wing of a plane, Wing correct? of a plane or right. anything right. of our products and services, and they have to lead them. And so now they have to bridge the balance of getting the respect because we, too, come in with our own assumptions about who they are before we give them a chance to show up as who they are. So coaching them through developing those relationships, respecting the diversities of the generations, Respecting the diversity of the culture and the workforce is a bigger also thing that we have to coach them through because some of them have not have been very sheltered in their cultural exposure. High as well. school to four year, good mm -hmm. college, mm -hmm. dorm, grades, coffee, coffee shop, sipping lattes mm -hmm. and boom. Now they're on the floor with. 55-year-olds that have been making those wings for 25 years. Or longer and okay. have ideas about them because they have children and grandchildren their age at home that they're parenting. So they know some of the behaviors. And so it's a lot automatic, of automatic right? misunderstanding. So it's a lot of coaching that goes in there. And trying to teach them to focus on the work, right? And through the work, you know, you can't do the work without people. So let's continue. So those are the big things. I would say, hands down, not even top three. Number one, if we can work through the entitlement pieces, everything else falls into place. You know, I can coach you on, let's work on getting your listening skills, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm not a great <laughs> listener, but, you know, it's constant yeah. work. Right. But I can coach you there. I can get you resources there. But it's shifting that mindset of, I'm entitled to have this. I'm entitled to be a VP in three to five years. Really? <laughs> okay. How do you how do you when you all are interviewing? I'm curious uh -huh. how you where do you go with that? Where do you how do you how do you kind of open that can so you can see if you can get a little glimpse? I mean, look, it would be nice when we're interviewing people if we mm -hmm. could just open them up right. and like see the control panel and go, oh, the entitlement thing is lit. Okay, you're not hired. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's hard because people can kind of cruise through that and you you know where they're going. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then suddenly three months in, you've got a phone call. Are there certain, uh, are there are there things you do, questions you ask, mm -hmm. things like that to really go there? Because I would love to hear that. Everyone watching this would love to hear that kind of stuff. Well, we do for this particular program of um, a full spectrum kind of leadership. We do leadership interviews, which is typically panels. The questions are behavioral driven. So, of course, we sprinkle in there to get an understanding of your technical background. Your resume speaks to that. But we'll ask questions around, so what did you do when, right? It could be, what did you do when you had a deadline and you did not meet it? How did you manage it? How did you communicate that you weren't going to meet your deadline? And how did you drive to the deliverable, right? So sprinkled in there is... If it's a team project, if they talk about what I, I, I did. You mean the butt man? Mm-hmm. Chapter eight? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did but, this. But, You yeah. know, so yeah. you start to look at that. So when you had to leave, you know, what, how did you manage, you know, when you had to lead a project and other people who potentially didn't meet what you were trying to do as a team, how did you manage, you know, what do you do when you're asked to do an assignment, um, when you have other plans, 
And people, you're asking in enough ways mm-hmm. that you can get them. Hopefully, I mean, obviously, people slip through because they're yeah. dealing with aunt, work auntie when mm-hmm. they slip through. But but you can you can suss a yeah. lot of them out by really watching them. And when you said a panel, is it a bunch of people? It's three. So it, it's almost like a, a PhD or whatever. Yep. You're giving your dissertation. Mm-hmm. You're you're sitting there with like three not three minas, but you know what uh-huh. I mean. Boom, boom, boom. And, and, and you're answering, so they're all watching. It's yes. almost like the parole board. I mean, everybody is watching <laughs> the answer. I mean, yes. so at least you guys can come together and go, I didn't like that answer. Right. And you can hear from the other two to go, I liked it, and here's why. Exactly. And so the reason it's three, because at one point we used to have one or, you know, one, and I really prefer to have three because – Three different people are looking and listening exactly the way you said. Either they're going to come out with the same thing or someone picked up something that you may not have picked up that draws you back to when you're doing the final let's talk about that candidate. And you go, oh, yeah, I did hear that, but I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. Someone else picked it up. Right. Right. Now, the funniest thing is there have been times where my teams have had a stalemate where I've had to come in to the room afterwards because they're debriefing, trying to decide whether we're going to select that candidate where they're like, no, one is like, absolutely. It's just like a jury. One's absolutely no, nope, nope, nope. Hung jury. Yeah. Yeah. And the others are like, well, but we think we should push forward. So it has to be a collective agreement. Then I come in and talk about the candidate. So what did you see? Dot, dot, dot. And so then kind of make the decision and that's rare, but it does happen because somebody does slip through. It's it's rare that someone slips through. I Now, what question they always struggle with is the question that we ask around fit, organizational fit with the organization. So if it is a fast-paced, you know, high-velocity environment, but you can tell this person is a little more slow to their giddy up, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Will they, fl- will they thrive in that environment? Right. But also, it's to put them in spaces that they're going to be uncomfortable, right? You are not your best when you're always comfortable. You just, you know, you you do good. But if you want to do great, challenge yourself in the most uncomfortable ways. Yeah. So those are the kind of questions that we ask them, you know, with not going in too much detail. Because if they watch it, then they're like, oh, I'm ready for the interview no, process. No, 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 no. Um, but it what gives you, you that What sense. would you, t- tell me what you would tell Um, You know, young people or people moving around, you know, there's Mm -hmm. a lot of industries that are, you know, there's a whole AI thing going on. There's people moving around, getting retrained, all Mm -hmm. sorts of things going on. What, what, tell me, um, you know, I'm I'm involved at, uh, at the level, at a college level, the the fraternity when I was in a college, I'm Mm -hmm. involved. I'm the, I'm the advisor, one of the advisors for my uh, uh, fraternity house at Tulane University. And, you know, we do some role playing with some Uh of the young uh, people, mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of these people literally are, t- if they're 21, they're 19, I feel like COVID sacked two years yes. off them real quick from an emotional maturity mm-hmm. standpoint. And and I'm watching them attempting to interview with me and mm-hmm. just failing miserably. And they're good right. people. They're good young people that you would probably love to have, but they can't get it out. What, what? Do, you, do are there things you have people do? Are there things you're advising? You brought your daughter today. Mm-hmm. She's going to be a senior, so yes. you have one of those people we're talking about a little mm-hmm. bit in your house. But but what 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 kind of advice would you give um, uh, young people or mm-hmm. anybody that's changing a career, yeah. uh, uh, interviewing for a brand new job? I mean, mm-hmm. so it could be a forty year old. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. It's making a career change. What kind of advice would you give to prepare people? Um, you know, for the type of jobs you offer. Look, you guys are an incredible company. Most mm-hmm. most uh, STEM people, most <laughs> uh, engineering people would love, you know, to have a shot at working for Lockheed Martin and a couple of your competitors. But mm-hmm. what, what, what type of advice would you give for anyone interviewing with some old person, you know, like you or I? I'm not old, but okay. Well, remember, old is 40, and I know you're 40, so it's all good. I, I, I'm not old. I, I will say again, you know, I, I have a niece. It. Listen, I have a niece who's trying to convince me yeah. I'm a senior citizen. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, exactly. no, girl. Yeah, exactly. But I'm with you. Just a number. 84 is the new 44. It's all good. It's perfect. Okay, I'm looking yeah, forward. Perfect. Exactly. So I guess the thing that I've noticed yeah. is people don't prepare. It's fairly simple. Know thyself. They come in cold? Come in cold because the resume speaks. They don't prepare. So as an example, my daughter recently had, she joined a a sorority this past spring. 
So there's plus minuses of having me as a mom. Because then I said, well, you need to practice for your, I said, would you like to practice for your interview? She said, okay. But then when I start to run her through the rigor of preparing for an interview and having her answers well thought out, because not just to give me an answer, but to expand on it in such a way that I know you have passion around it, you have knowledge around it. You have an interest to learn growth mindset around it. You can pick that up immediately versus someone just playing back their resume. I can read your resume. So I don't need you to play back your resume. What I need you to talk to me about is around the questions that I ask you. Show me the passion, the desire to have the job that you are having. Like for my daughter, you want to be a part of this organization. So how are you going to express to them why? How are you going to express to them the value you're going to bring? to the organization, why they should select you. Also, you know, you want to ask the questions about what are you going to gain as to create a partnership. Most people miss it. They just don't prepare. They come in, my resume speaks for itself. They're going to ask me basic questions. No, we're not. We're never going to ask you basic questions because we want to know who who you are. And It's interesting, and that is something that is very hard generationally. Mm-hmm. It is very hard for that, it just is. Mm-hmm. It's it's a one out of two out of a hundred. It's not two out of ten anymore. Right. Because it, you know, when you throw out the word passion, mm-hmm. you know, I always add the word sincerity to it. Yes. You know, this is not some passion you looked up and mm-hmm. you think you're supposed to be passionate about this to get what you want. No, 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 no. You got to add sincere yes. on that <laughs> because if you're not passionate about this, well, then just get out. Why are you interviewing for this? You know, we don't, we don't, you, you, you probably don't want to be here or you mm-hmm. want to be here for the wrong reason. And we really don't want to have you here. So it doesn't really matter, but it's hard. And I, and I don't, I don't know why I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know whether it's a social media thing or, or it's a people playing, uh, you know, video games mm-hmm. on a, and listen, during COVID people did what they had to do. The kids, right. you know, like my youngest son was, you know, playing, you know, uh, video games or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and I was like, what's he doing? And my wife said, he's at the mall right now. He can't go to the mall. He's at the mall. He's right. on FaceTime with 10 kids. They're at the mall. He's like, okay, I got it. Right. I got it. They're doing what they got to do to socialize. I get it. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're doing what they got to do. But I, I, it's so important. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, I, I tell people all the time, you know, email is pretty much on its last gasp from a communication standpoint. Sure. Texting is almost dead. They've, mm-hmm. they've changed all the texting rules. Uh, you know, the FCC has changed all the rules. You can't spam mm-hmm. text. You, can't. you actually have to talk to people. We're kind of back to talking to people, and really. It's good. We're, it's awesome. And, and, you know, we did, someone asked me actually in one mm-hmm. of your things about email, and I was like, uh, why don't you get up and walk to their office? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, can you actually go? And then they went further and said, well, it's someone in Singapore. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why don't you pick up the phone? Um, Stop yes. emailing. Call them in Singapore. If it's that important, you call at 4 o'clock in the morning for you mm-hmm. when it's 8 a.m. for them. If it's that important, right. actually call them. And I remember they're like, hmm, novel idea. You know, because they're just, you know, all day. They could probably all type 100 words a minute. They're right. just killing it on their on their time. Mm-hmm. They're probably talk to texting now, whatever they're doing. But but um, it was amazing how that, that thought, that was not mm-hmm. the first thought yep. to pick up the phone at all. And I'm thinking, Wow. Yeah, so you do have to spend time around developing their communication skills and capabilities. So it's not one-dimensional. So when you're developing people, so say you have a candidate who interviews, and they don't come across the best in being able to articulate. You know there's something in there and they just can't get it out? You know what's there. You try to pull it out. But what you look for is can I develop you? That's more important. Are you coachable? Are you coachable? And can I develop you? I will take a person who is coachable that I can develop over someone who is pristine and perfect in all ways, because typically those who want to develop and are coachable are the ones who really have it in the belly that I want to do this and I want to be here and I want to contribute. I just can't get this over the hump. So you've got to mix your workforce of those type, two different type of people, right? Because here's the other thing. 
you also want to create a community with your workforce because it creates this balance of they're the people who are going to be doing it when we are not there any longer. And if we can create this community base of going to get resources, going to ask the questions, going to reach out to the person versus being right here, as you said, <laughs> no, go across the factory floor, go find them, do the things that you need to do, create your community base. The ones who do it well are extremely successful. I call I call it the double A. You said it the mean away. The Joel mm -hmm. way is the double A. Attitude and aptitude mm -hmm. wins all day, all day over resume. Give me a great attitude mm -hmm. and and be smart. Yep. It doesn't mean you have a four Just have good aptitude. Yep. Like be willing to learn stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'll take you all day. I'd rather develop you. Yep. Than argue with you. Yeah. About how smart you are about something that you already think you know mm -hmm. better than me. And by the way. You may know better than me, and I would be excited mm -hmm. to learn from you, but not the way you're teaching me. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I, I'm very sensitive to making sure this is a growth piece for me as a leader, making sure that I'm listening to them. Doesn't mean I'm going to move on what you say, but I need you to know that I am authentic. I'm hearing what you say. Let's talk it through. But what I do find is that sometimes after I tell them no, they'll come back again. And then I have to say, didn't I tell you no about that already? Why are you back over here? Go away. The answer remains no. Go figure out. I said, come back with something new because that's dead. Right. Right. But it's having creating that environment. We can have that conversation. Say, go away now because we've already talked about this. And they are really kind of like pick, 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 pick. Right. Because they think they're going to wear you down after a while when no, if it's no, it's kind of no. And learning to take no for no and moving on. And it may be just no for right now. It might not be no forever. Yeah, because it's it's this line. I was having a conversation with someone this morning with one of my clients. She's great. Mm -hmm. And I said, and she was she was annoyed about a, mm -hmm. some, a younger employee of hers that was really pushing back. Mm -hmm. and the employee was pushing back the wrong way. And I said, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, edge, you know, edge sword. It's like, mm -hmm. we want them to be um, uh, confident. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to hear their ideas, right. but it's their delivery. <laughs> you know, and when I, when I said to the young person, I said, no one can hear you mm -hmm. because they're drowned out in the way you're delivering it. So this cool idea you have has your boss pissed. Like they're not hearing it anymore. It's done. Like you, you have to learn how to communicate like that. And I think that's a big, mm -hmm. big, my, my bet is that is something that's a daily thing for you that you're dealing with. It is, but believe it or not, I'm even dealing with it with our more experienced workforce as well because I also have another program that I lead that is more of our um, experienced professionals that we're getting ready for C-suite, right? VP, director, VP level, senior vice president level. And even in there, they have behaviors because we didn't catch it early. So now they've gone through their career, 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 and now they're at a pivotal moment, and all these behaviors that weren't corrected early on are groomed and, and, and spent time maturing them through. Now they're at this next level, and it is all hands on deck where trying to relearn 20 years of behavior that you have thought made you successful. So we get that. And I have conversations with, so how is that? helpful to you you tell me how is that helpful to you responding that way <laughs> you tell me because if it may have worked in one environment but it's not going to work in you're this coming next up one. here it's not going to work it's not yeah. going to work and so now we spend but because we spend time there do they authentically try to change behavior or do they change behavior based on situation what percent? I mean, I'm going to go with this less than 5% would, uh, would authentically try to change. Yes, it's situational. That could be a high level, but yes. I mean, a full change. Yes. Uh, under, I almost look at it as this is a stupid analogy, but their whole life they have been eating their meal with a salad fork. Yep. And suddenly you're like, hey, listen, the big fork is the one you eat your <laughs> meal with. Not the, and they're like, yeah, but yeah. for 20 years I've been, you're like, okay, but I, yeah. I need you to use the big fork now. Yep. No. You know, so yeah. I find with behaviors like that, it's a very, very small percentage that can truly pivot. Now, by the way, these are always the uber successful people oh, that, yeah, can, yeah. that can take a step back and go, wow, mm -hmm. I've been using the wrong fork for 20 years. And they look at you and they go, thank you. Uh -huh. I won't be doing that anymore. Exactly. That's got to be less than 5%, yes. right? 
The rest is like banging your head against Biting the wall. Biting you tooth and nail. You're just dealing with a bunch of bricks because it's like, okay, now. And then I go, well, if you say you want it, I got the sledgehammer. So I'm just going to bust your head as many times as it takes to get you where you say right, you want to we'll go. Right, we'll do it the hard way. That's so right. you get to pick, right? And I just think naturally <laughs> and to show up authentic because this young generation needs authenticity. They can sniff it out. So so now we we pivoted over. Now you're talking about the mm -hmm. senior manager who's mm -hmm. got, you know, a great write-up, an incredible jacket yep. in your company, and now they're they've been chosen. Hey Mina, Mr. So and so is about to go up. Mm -hmm. We need you to get in there and make sure he's ready or ready to yep. go up. And a big part of it that's huge what you just said, and I think this is great for for older managers, anyone leading anything, mm -hmm. is the young people. Got your number. Yes. Right. Yeah. And then, and then, and then it's just going to become just a up, just a snowball going down a hill because it is. Then they're yep. And and literally, probably every nothing gets done. It's, it's like a constant battle. Constant. Yeah. And it, and it comes down to every single time mm -hmm. communication skills, how they're communicating, and you know, it, it's it's I, the greatest communicators, uh, you know, for me uh, that that I see, uh, you know. If they're using email and they send an email, mm -hmm. it's it's very tactical right. about, you know, there's bullet points. Hey, mm -hmm. there's these six bullet points, but can you talk to me at 10? Right. But I just want you to see them before you come in. Mm -hmm. And then there, there's no, you know, there's no, by the way, here's the new law, wham. You know, and letting them read the new law in their office or their home or whatever it is. And and no, 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 I'm, we're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. not, I'm not just going to shove it down your throat. We're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in big corporations, there's a lot of shoving going on. You know, there's the memo, there's the change. Yeah. We expect you to change right away. People like you know, no, 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 no. He's not going to pick up the big fork just because he got a memo on it. There's no way. No. Because he's been using the wrong fork for 20 years. So he's not a bad person. He just, he's not going to do it. Yeah. Unless, yeah. You, unless you tell him. And so, so you, you, <laughs> <laughs> you have fun all day. Tell me about this. Uh, I read this article. It was very interesting. I wanted to get your opinion on this when you came in. It's a couple days ago. It just came out. I bet you've seen it or you guys have talked about it. The new normal with um, work schedules where people are working remote, and even if it's a combination of remote, mm -hmm. where around 3.30, it gets real quiet. <laughs> and then people are pounding away on their email at 9.30 at night. It's yes. not like they're not working, but they're not working that 8 to 5 mm -hmm. thing that maybe you and I are more ingrained or 8 to 6, whatever it is, mm -hmm. even though we've adjusted now as well. Mm -hmm. And it, it just goes super quiet. Like they can watch corporately yes. all the stuff go down and the all the uh, all the tea times at the golf courses are filled and everyone's out taking a walk and walking their dog or with their grandchild or with their kid or whatever. And then they eat dinner and then boom, the email lights up at nine o'clock at night. And so stuff that would have got done with mm -hmm. you and I in a normal workday is now getting done the next day. Right. Are you are you watching that phenomenon go on? And are you guys just going, okay, this is the new normal, so we got to deal with it? Well, we have a diverse workforce. So we have those who are inside our plants and facilities that are there for That's their shift work. Day, work. Right? That is That's shift, shift work. work. They're yeah. there. And even our, our salaried employee professionals um, are there, right? Because somebody's got to lead them, right? Right. But then we have the other part of the group. And I have... Um, People on my team who work that shift that you're talking about, and they're up at crack of dawn. I'm still under the covers at the time right. they're starting their day because at three o'clock they want to stop, go live a little life, pick up kick, whatever it is they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Do dinner and do exactly what you said, and then they come. You see them pop back up around eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and if I just happen to have my computer up and I walk by, bam, bam, I'm yeah. like, oh. Okay. You're right. But I'm trying to embody the mindset of what is the deliverable that we have? What is the timeline that we need to do it in? As long as you meet that, I'm going to create some flexibility. But the flexibility on their side is there are going to be times where this schedule that you've defined for yourself where I'm going to leave at three and do all these things. Right. So I start at nine. That that's not going to work, and I'm going to need you to be available at four, four, four o'clock. I mean, I'm going to need you at five. So if they deliver eight. and they're flexible back, mm -hmm. you have no problem with it. No problem. Not delivering, not flexible. That's when you got to come down. Yeah, that's and when say, I say 
That's no more leaving started. at three. Nope. Yep. That's when you go back to old management and leadership style where these are your work hours. I expect you to be here from blah, blah to blah, blah times of the day. You need to make yourself available. These, this is your work schedule, right? This new group who are working remotely, they don't align to that. And I feel we need to create trust and space. So if you're delivering what you're supposed to do and you're working remotely, I don't care if you're in Florida, I don't care where you are. Be available when we need you available. Deliver on what you need to deliver on. Work the hours that you say you're going to work. Do not break the trust. Then I'm good. And you're going to have to move that way a little bit with our workforce going forward. It cannot be if they're not doing factory build type work where we need them there specific hours that you're going to expect that because that's what they're looking for. Right. They're only going to choose jobs that allow them that a level of flexibility. So it is, it's, it's just my... I have a, and COVID contributed to that. I have a good friend who's been in the commercial real estate business forever in New York mm -hmm. City, and he's like, who could have ever predicted this? That, nope. that like, the all these buildings in there are third filled. Like, who could have ever, mm -hmm. ever literally, you know, predicted that? I mean, no one. No one. You know, that it, that it was a complete change like that. And it and it takes uh, people like you, it takes creative, dynamic leaders to embrace because mm -hmm. it's the it's the new normal. Right. Um, so we're, we're, we're coming to the end. I, I was writing some notes mm -hmm. um, and because and, and, you said it so many times that I want everyone to hear it. Um, uh, you know, when you're watching this podcast, growth mindset, you said it numerous times throughout. And those of you that are watching this, that are interested in personal development, interested in, in moving forward where you are, interested in getting a promotion, interested maybe in changing careers, you're a young person, you're interested in getting a job, it, you know, growth mindset, wow. I don't necessarily think that's, I don't think there's a class on that in college. I don't think there's professors talking about that in college. They should, but I don't think they do. But you said it numerous times, and I guarantee you if you're saying it, Everyone yeah. like you, any place they're going is looking at them, these candidates the same way. And, you know, say to yourself, you know, what, 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 what first of all, why do I want this job? Am I, am I applying for this job just because I should apply or, 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 or do I want this job? And, and then when I get there, what's my goal? What's your goal? Okay. And, 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 and your goal should be per Mina, who, which I do agree with. You should want to grow and learn at 100 miles an hour, yep. as fast as humanly possible. And then I'm just going to add in that the smarter you are, the harder you fall. I and, like and that if you, if you go in with that attitude, it's going to be very hard for you to succeed. Yeah. So, Mina, thank you so much thank for spending for some time me. with me today. This was a lot of fun. Yes. You'll definitely be coming back. And that's another episode of The Big Joel Show. Thank you.